It is not the critic who counts, not the man who points out how the strong man stumbles, or the doer of deeds could have done with them better. Credit belongs to the man who is actually in the arena, whose face is marred by dust and sweat and blood, who strives valiantly, who errs, who comes short again and again, who spends himself in worthy cause, who at the best knows, in the end, the triumph of high achievement, and who at the worst, if he fails, at least fails while daring greatly, so that his place shall never be with those cold and timid souls who neither know victory nor defeat. Welcome to episode one of Enter the Arena by Leader Kicking Podcast. We are here with Tig Leader, the founder of Leader Kicking. Tig, you come from an incredible background, okay? First of all, he started off with Connacht Rugby, then he played professionally in Italy, then he went over to the MLR. You've captained teams on both coasts, okay? We're talking about the Boston Free Jacks here, we're talking about the San Diego team. You also managed to squeeze in a few extra caps for the USA. On top of that, you somehow then managed to migrate sports, play professionally in Poland, play professionally in Canada, and it's led you on this path that has opened up NFL to Irish kickers. So I don't know how else to open up this podcast, but to talk about you and the massive impact you've had on a few of these Irish lads so far. Yeah, a bit of a random journey listening to, listen to it back like that. Um, but that's it. I went on a journey, long, long story short, learned a lot, figured out a lot of obstacles, especially from the American football side of things for an Irish fella trying to go down this path where there isn't really a path. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's what then kind of prompted me to say when I come home to Ireland, I'm, I want to try and establish something that would allow lads to, to you know, learn from my journey, your journey, Irish guys have tried to figure it out before, let's connect the dots, make it as accessible as possible. And we're about a year and a half into it. And yeah, look, we're flying it. So, um, And now we're kind of at a point where we literally have a door right into the NFL. <laughs> and who better than to come on on our first episode other than the GA all-star himself, Rory Began, okay, the, the Canon Began from Monaghan. So are you excited to hear from him today? I mean, I know you've already had a couple of sessions with him. You've trained with him. He's been invited to the NFL Combine. But my God, this is exciting. No, it's huge. It's huge. I did no chance did it did it think for a second that we'd be sending lads. I mean, the NFL international program didn't exist for kick, kickers and punters until this year. These lads are the first athletes to do it and four of the five are Irish. So that's unbelievable. Like we've pushed hard to, to open, as you said, open up that door. Thankfully, from the NFL side of things, they trusted me and they've listened and they trusted the talent in Ireland. And it, the unique thing about all this is like, the reason why there's such unbelievable talent in Ireland is I've said to people, American football and Gaelic football are the only two sports where you put the ball on the grass and you got to kick it up high, straight between uprights. The only sports that I know of. Rugby, we're off the deck, but we have a tee to prop it up. Soccer is into the goals. Like The GA lads have such, they've already amassed such an amount of uh, indirect repetition and experience in the art of kicking the ball off a deck. Um, so no surprise that of the four Irish lads that are going, three are, you know, inter-county gated footballers and, and none better than Rory Began. And it, you kind of took the words right out of my mouth. Okay, there is no one better than him in terms of being ideally set up for this. He's kind of at a, a great age for it. He has an amazing amount of points, his unbelievable experience, kind of that elite athlete, great mentality. He's also hit one over from 65 metres, which, you know, he translates that to yards at 72. That's longer than an NFL record of 66 yards, which is held by Justin Tucker, Okay. Not to blow anyone out of the waters, I, I think you should hear from him yet. You should hear from him first. He's absolutely blown the roof off the GA game. Um, I am joined, of course, by Rory Began, um, goalkeeper for Monaghan, uh, GA All-Star, as mentioned. Um, and now in line to be in uh, the NFL IPP, he is going to compete in Indianapolis and in NFL Combine in March. Rory, how you doing? I'm doing very well. Yourself? Very good. I'm very good. I'm glad you came here. Um, so I'm kind of listing off your accolades. I know I'm going to kind of mention one or two, but I cook one kind of forever. Um, you're uh, kind of a legend of the game. Um, you've kind of changed the game in many ways. So what's it like now, I guess, sitting here, um, mainly because of leader kicking, that you're possibly moving a little bit away from GAA, at least for uh, a short period of time, to pursue something very different? Yeah, it's a, it's still a bit surreal, um, but something I'm ready for and I'm excited for. Um, the opportunity that, that Tag has had, or leader kicking has helped us with, is, is is unbelievable, and it's not something that 
you grew up thinking that will ever happen to you. Um, obviously, playing Gaelic football has been a massive part of my life since I'm six years of age. Um, and watching NFL on the TV, it, it probably seemed like a pipe dream, really, that that's the biggest league in the world. And uh, how would you ever get into it? Um, now, was that ever even kind of like a thought process as a as a kid? Or like, did you ever think you would change away from GAA? I know you said you played since you were six years old, so that sort of stuff gets it's, rooted pretty quick, you know? Yeah, it was probably the only thing that was in my life at the time, GAA. And NFL wouldn't have been a massive um, thing in our house when, when we were younger. Like, yeah. Um, you really like soccer background, I guess, a bit of, bit of soccer, a bit of GAA. A bit of soccer bit of, and a bit of GAA, yeah. yeah and, and that, but Gaelic football was massive. My father played it, um, so... I followed in his footsteps and, and, and went and, and pursued my own career in it and still playing it at the moment. Um, but in terms of the NFL, it, it probably just seemed like something that was, oh, I'd love to do this, but how it, it could never happen. Like, how they're going to see me all, all the way over here in small little county in Monaghan. Um, but thankfully for leader kicking, like, you know, he, he got in contact with me this year. And um, at the time, I was thinking, is this what's this gonna what's this gonna lead to or whatever? But he explained exactly what what the opportunity lay what what was laid out in front of me and mm-hmm. and how could how it could be achieved and um went to that first session in Bambridge with a good few other kickers and see, impressed and uh, just nervous kept at it. Nervous. I was nervous because I wasn't sure what I was getting into. Yeah, um, but t- I just seemed to take to it like a duck to water, like in terms of the striking of it. It's what a big part of my game is known for is is, is kicking through kickouts and, and, and free kicks. But um, in terms of it, I was nervous obviously going up. I didn't know who was going to be there. I didn't know what I had to do, exactly what tag was going to lay out for us that day. But um, as I said, I was really happy about doing it and something I wanted to continue on. But even at that time, did I expect that I was sitting here talking to you a month out from um, potentially the biggest month for your life? Like, so uh, no, I didn't. But I'm glad I'm here now talking to you. So. Yeah, I mean, the chances of actually any player, any athlete that grows up in the United States of actually making the combine. So, you know, if there's 3 million high school kids playing football, then the the amount of them that go to college is probably down to about 120,000 of those. The amount of them that even kind of try and pursue football after that is about, you know, four or 5,000. They might actually get invited to the combine. You know, you're talking about the hundreds. So the chances are about 0.002%, somewhere around there. Um, the chance of it being an Irish person there is, you know, even lower. It was zero until, you know, we found this out, that Tyga opened the international pathway, player pathway, and kind of got you guys in there. So obviously, you are you you were saying you were naturally gifted. Um, did that come at an early age in terms of striking the ball? Or like, when did you kind of realize that? Or did it come from your dad? You said your dad played. Was it always kind of something in the family? Yeah, yeah. Um not not so much like that that was still a good kicker up, up the ball a good kicker up the ground and stuff but in terms of myself it was it was um just something they applied to me practice when I was growing up I wouldn't say I was a naturally good striker at 6 or 7 years of age I could strike a ball but it just took a lot of fine tuning throughout uh, coaching um goalkeeping coaches was a big part of it played a wee bit of soccer when I was in around 10 11 12 and gotcha. um I would have obviously got used to that striking technique off the ground but um, it did take a lot of lot of coaching. There was times where I had a really big kick, but we, we didn't know where it was going to go at some yeah. time. But fine tuning a lot of that, like in terms of my steps and in terms of my um, body position and when, when striking the ball, a lot of that was fine tuned through previous years through through goalkeeping coaches and um, something that I, ha- I felt has benefited me to this day. But it definitely there was a lot of heartache growing up when I was obviously training out this goal uh, with this kicking, um, but something that. Um, I'm so much. I'm so comfortable in now. It's still very tough, but so, so where did that where did that drive kind of bring you then in terms of trying to like perfect it or trying to get better at it or because it kind of seems like you know you're like like adamant, like a little stubborn to kind of get better and better at striking the ball as a kid. Yeah, um, I just felt you probably need to bring something to the table that will wow the coaches. Like, um, and were you big as a kid or? Uh, I was tall. Him? I was tall getting into into my teens, um, and I sprouted up a lot. Come, come close to 18 and um, I obviously felt with obviously my big my big frame they yeah. help a lot with your strike your power your distance and stuff um, but I just felt that this is something that I can bring to the party and free kicks was a massive thing because Stephen Cluxon had just kicked that free kick to win Dublin their All-Ireland in 2011 so the 
Which changed a lot. It changed a lot. It changed a lot in terms of what goalkeepers can offer to the table now. And you see since that, the amount of goalkeepers who are up taking free kicks. And I just felt at that time, I wasn't taking frees as much as I am now. Um, And I got passed the job on in in a league game that meant nothing. Didn't mean anything to us. And I kicked two points that day. And since then, I've been taking them. And, and how did that feel that day? Like, were you, were you bagging nerves? Or you were like, nah, this is... this is Not really, because the game meant, meant nothing. <laughs> but I just probably, probably to me, it felt <laughs> like, I scored easier. This could be now your chance to take over. And fa- yeah. they went over. And uh, since then, I've been taking them from my club uh, and my county and um, going really well with, with them. And um, it's, it's mad how much experience plays a huge part in kicking. Like, um, you don't take the pressure as much as you did maybe when you were younger. Now it's just you reset after each kick whether it goes over the bar or not and um, that's something that I've felt I've learned a lot through my career is the missed ones or have nearly been as important as the scoring ones due to what you've learned from them. Yeah, I've learned in my experience as well. Like it's, it's, it's sometimes you make all or nothing of it when you, when you miss a kick, um, like especially if it's important or like can be important to you, you know, you miss one and you kind of go off and your kind of head's down and the demons start trickling in and mm. You know, you've got like, uh, instead of having like a little angel on your right shoulder and a little devil on your left, you've got like uh, two devils and they're both, you know, like, you know, this is, this is bad. This is really bad. And you're really bad. And da, 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 da. So how do you kind of deal with like, I guess, missing, if you missed a big kick at any point, like where's, where's that kind of reset process for Rory? Like what does, what do you, what are you kind of telling yourself? What do you kind of do? You just kind of wipe yeah. it off or? Yeah, but four or five years ago, it- it's a whole lot different to as it was now, like a couple of years ago, where you were beating yourself up, you were probably still thinking of that kick when you were going on to your next kick. Yeah. Um, whereas nowadays, it's it's little reset, like, you know, a little bit of self-talk in the head just to forget about it. And I think now the fact that as goalkeepers, the way the game is now, we're so involved in the game as a, a extra out, outfielder, you know, as a communicator, you don't have time to dwell on it. Um, back then, it, it wasn't a, as big a role the goalkeeper coming out, so you're standing in your own eight, uh, what, what, 16 yard box, whatever it is, and you're hearing the crowd shouting at you, and you're you're st- still dwelling on that free. Whereas now you're always a part of the action, and I just find you don't think about the mistakes as much because you're so involved. Um, and you you being who you are, do you find like the crowd really trying to get into your head every time you're? Getting well, that's the why ball I stand out in the 45 yard line now, just to, I don't hear them as much. Um, but yeah, I love it. That's the way it's gone now. Crowds, are, um, it's just an extra way to put you off and stuff. But again, my experience is a big part of that, and and it, it I find it goes in one ear out the other now. So, and what made you kind of um, um, for those who kind of don't know, like you you take it outfield quite quite often, you know, and you do have the big boot and you got a great pass. So what kind of taught you to kind of like oh, I'm just gonna have a go here, I'm just gonna run out, I'm gonna take it up, I'm gonna kind of change the way this is this might be played a little bit. Like it almost seems to me like it might be being a little bit of a gurrier or something when you were growing up, kind of. Yeah, I wouldn't have been, uh, I would, I certainly I would have played outfield a lot when I was younger in them um, early age groups, um, but I wouldn't have been very good. Like, and right. I just I went and played a bit of soccer and I offered new goals one day as a way of getting me into the panel. And sort of, just like last resort. <laughs> last resort, just get me onto the team. And uh, funny enough, my me, me club manager in, in Scotland had heard about it and put me in goals for one of the games and since then I've been in and out between outfield and, and goals till about minors um, and since then it's it's been goalkeeper ever since and I've always maybe asked maybe throw me out for one game but no it's, not, it's, it's never happened but I felt I could offer something coming out the pitch in, in a sense that I'm maybe not pressurised as much in that position because everybody else is, someone has to look after somebody else so I get that wee bit more time in the ball to pick out passes or create overloads or stuff like that. So I just felt that it it has it has um, developed a lot over the last few years. I think the game I did start doing it and I got noticed for it was when we actually went down the fourteen men. So the team we were playing, I think it was Kerry in the National League one time. Yeah. They started the press real high because we were down that extra player. So I actually ended up getting on the ball much and it helped beat their high press because that was fourteen on fourteen. It was, yeah, essentially, yeah, yeah. and. Uh, so it just turned out that since then it, it's went on and on and on and it's got bigger and better and uh, there's been mistakes along the way. I've been caught out of the goals and stuff, but again, I always find it's a bit like kicking, like you need to miss a few to actually get better at it to, so you can learn. So uh, I've learned a lot about the position in that sort of outfield role a lot more in this last two or three years. And 
Yeah, I guess we learn we learn as much from our or more from our mistakes and actually the perfect ones. Like, yeah, I know it's in my career. Like I'm sure you have as well. Some of your some of your long ones or some of my like big rugby kicks when I played rugby. But my big field goal sometimes I'm like, if I hit it and it goes dead straight, I've kind of learned nothing about myself no. in a way. Yeah, do you yeah, know what yeah. I mean? But if I hit it and it hits off the post or something goes wrong or you know I screwed it up or missed it, I'm just kind of like, okay, what did I do wrong? Go back, reset, and then kind of learn your lesson from there. You know. It's yeah, but that's where technology I think has come in now as well. Like we we would do a lot of analysis of our own games and stuff. So, um, and I was that boat with Scott Sound and Monty. You both watch your games back over. Yeah, kind of yeah, we get access analysis. to our tapes like and and uh, obviously watching watching them back, you can see maybe you can analyze your body position and the goalkeeping yeah. coach would obviously help you a lot with that as well. But um, I don't like getting into it too much. Like it could have just been the way your foot slipped or maybe or it could have just the way you connected. Um, but. Um, if you kick three out of four in a game, you know, you'd be happy enough as well. Um, in a Gaelic game, I suppose in the NFL it can be a wee bit more cutthroat. Ah, so, 75% is, you know, yeah, you're doing, yeah. doing pretty well there. Yeah, but well. uh, for me, I, I, when I'm up there, I like to, you know, if you're up there, you're up there expecting the score. So, so missing is not an option, but it's it's part of the game. And uh, But for me, I think with technology and all these days, and especially on the coaching field with, with the goalkeeping coach, there'd be videos of you taking freeze and stuff maybe from a behind angle so it shows the one that goes over the bar and the one that doesn't go over the bar you have that same angle where you can see maybe your head position or your foot position or you overstretched it or something like that there little wee things you can always find you to help you the next day so that's one big thing I've, I've taken yeah so you're quite technical I suppose in a sense your approach and yeah. the, the NFL guys like a lot of the kickers speaking to them all they're very very technical and I know a tie can be as well um, obviously you've got to stay within your own technique but you get very technical and like the more niche you get in these sports you know and the more kind of like especially with kicking um, you know there's, there's one guy who takes the freeze on a GAD team out of 15 out of a squad of how many you know 23, 25 yeah. um, it, it just gets more and more technical for that one guy working on working on what he works on um, so I guess go, going from there when did you when did you kind of get called up to Monaghan then and, and how was that moment for you as a kind of player Um I'm presuming you're still a goalkeeper and you're getting called up and yeah. what was what was that like? Uh, 2011 it was um, it was after the National League I think uh, Eamon McEnany was the manager at the time and he rang I got a random phone call from him uh, one day in April and I had just been down at watching a local game down in the club so not expecting his call um, I was the under 21 keeper that year he was the manager as well so he was doing the joint up and so he knew you quite well. He knew he knew of me, yeah. And funny enough, the the year, the year that year earlier on, the year we weren't playing well, and the year the other keeper weren't playing well. So there potentially we wouldn't be dropped. To about three or four months later, he's ringing you to take you into the senior panel. So at that stage, first person I rang was me, my mother and and my father, and I'm like, here, this this opportunity came along for me here, and um, still not believing it, but that's when I got called in and came in and met. There was a challenge game, I think, the first session there. I didn't get playing, I got watching it, but it was nice to be in a dressing room of players you looked up to the whole time. And, you know, like, so Tommy Freeman, um, Darren Cues, um, Paul Finlay, just to name three, Owen Lennon as well, four. And are you a bit in awe? You're a bit, you're a bit in awe. Like, and I was quite a quiet kid at, th- at that age. Yeah. Um, so I was even more quiet going <laughs> in there. Like, there was barely a word out of me for, for the first maybe year or two. Um, but that was just you're in a dressing room with people you you go to your, to games with your father with you know your parents. So, so, what, what, so, so what do you say to them like like hi? <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, you weren't looking for signed jerseys then, so <laughs> exactly. Right, yeah. um, but no, it was it was a surreal experience going in that first day, and then obviously the, you got more confident as the as the years went on, as the train sessions went on, the years went on. But um, at that time, when I got that call from me, it was something I'd always been dead as doing for, and uh, he gave me the opportunity to come in. I didn't play loads in the in the year or two that he was there. Um, I may have played one, maybe two games, but the experience of training, getting involved in a gym gym program. Um, I suppose it was, it's it's so much different, right? For, for people who don't really know, like you know, County of Monaghan, massively different than your club, probably, right? In terms of all the types of things like nutrition and training and kind of more elite level, I guess. Yeah, there's just there's that extra level to it mm. uh, um, than your club, but our club would be getting close to that now. A lot of clubs are. Yeah, I think the way it's went on now, the S and C programs. There's always an S and C coach in a, in a team. You know, they may not always be a nutritionist, but there's someone. There's a link there to go to somebody. And I think the way players treat themselves now, treat their own bodies, 
everyone's living in a new professional mindset, but just not a professional. Yeah, it's a professional athlete playing an amateur sport. Yeah, exactly. That's exactly what it is. Like they're coming home from their nine to five job, going home, getting something quick to eat, getting the training by, uh, getting the bike ready for training, and away, and then not back till eleven o'clock that night, and doing that three times a week can take its toll. But I don't think any players now would be there if they didn't want to be there, and I think that's um, that's how the, how, the, how the games went now. You know, it's got to that near professional stage. Um, yeah, and I suppose you get players in there then that are all, they're there, they're all there for the right reasons, right? The like love of the game, and if you don't if you don't love it, you're not going to be doing that, right? You're not going to be running around. You're not going to be putting pressure on your your wives, your girlfriends, or whoever, your family. You know, being gone as you said till eleven o'clock, three four nights a week, and yeah, that's, that's it. They like, can nobody nobody wants a player like that around either. If he if he's not fully in or he's not all in, like you know, um, and if he's having doubts, what's he going to be like coming down to the crunch time when when the championship comes? So. Um, in terms of that, like I think everyone in that modern panel, everyone in the Scottish team panel, they're all there because they love the game, they love, they love, they want to win, they want to do well, and and that's that. I suppose that create that's that's the whole, what GA is all about, like the bonds that you kind of create during that. So how is kind of the camaraderie being with your teammates kind of throughout the this is say the Monaghan your Monaghan career in terms of how you bonded with them? Obviously, you're all like not stuck in this thing, but you're all involved in it. You're all heavily influenced by it. You're obviously, you all had the same goal with winning yeah. all Ireland. So what's that been like, kind of getting to that cohesiveness, but still being in an amateur game? So kind of being like elite professional athletes almost, but still inside an amateur game. Yeah. And from all different parts of the county. Yeah, I think we look, we bounce off each other a lot. Um, lads looking advice of, of, from different parts about how you deal with this part of it and how you deal with that. Um, but it's, I think it's pretty simple. Like lads, I've been playing the sports since I've been six years of age. It's, you know, the friends at their club, the friends at their county. And it's just like that. You don't, we don't go in this real serious mindset that we only talk to each other about football like there's a yeah, yeah. crack about how you get on over Christmas or you know do you get up too much over the weekend not that they get too many weekends out but or that but I think lads we just all bounce off each other in terms of um, you know what we want to get out of this and but there's also a bit of crack and slagging in the dressing room too and that's 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 an important part of it like I've had the exact same experience in, in the American football locker room like first of all the first thing you notice you go in there's like music blasting in every locker room and it's like this tune's going everyone's happy go lucky you know I think people kind of have a have a view sometimes that you go in because your professionals are up at that upper level trying to be a leash that everything is very serious and everything's rrr, rrr, rrr. Mm. but you kind of go in there and it's that, as you said like you're kind of having the crack like oh, how'd you go on Christmas how'd you go with this like where'd you go for the family did you go here did you go there mm. you know me being it's like you know, hey did you go back to Ireland you know or like yeah. did, you, yeah. did you go wherever up to Toronto I find that kind of camaraderie is kind of the, the same and kind of like going back and forth to each other, which is kind of like a nice little similarity, yeah. I guess, between two sports. Um, and this, I kind of want to talk as well about what it felt to like, um, obviously being, being from on and heavily Gaelic football background, you kind of grow up playing that and then 2018 comes and you make it as a GA All-Star. Like what's what's that kind of feel like and, and how did your kind of family react to that? Yeah, it, w- it was a proud moment. Um, again, was that kind of the pinnacle? Like you're kind of, Searching for that as a kid, or is it always just kind of like all Ireland more mindset? I think this that you're in a team sport. You don't, you're not sitting writing down your goals at the start of the year. I want to win an All Star in 2018. That's right. that's not your mindset. Your mindset is you want to be the best goalkeeper. If an award comes at that, it does. If it doesn't, it doesn't. That's fine. The ultimate goal is to win the All Ireland, the Ulster Championship, the National League, whatever competition that the whole team will get something out of. That's your aim, and if I my aim is to be the best goalkeeper, I'm helping my I'm helping my team. But I don't write this big massive I want to win an all star in my goal book at the start of the season. That's not what I do. Um, but when it does come around, when the, when the season's over, you can really appreciate it a lot more. Right, I'll be nominated here. It'll be nice to get it. It'll be a nice achievement. And um, but ultimately, the main goal is to is to win uh, collective awards. And um, but that time when it did come, obviously the season was over. I was still playing with Scotland at the time. When, when the award ceremony was on but yeah when was it a bit of a shock or did you get a uh, there was a or? big competition that time between me and Stephen Cluxon and there was a bit of media um, noise made about the whole thing you know, he had won the All Ireland and you know, Monon didn't um, but I felt that I had a good season that year not a perfect season but I had a better season than I've had in previous and uh, yeah I, I was a uh, there were murmurs that I was getting it the night before, so I didn't really sleep that much because I couldn't tell anybody. I didn't tell my parents or anything. I just went up to the room, sat in the room, and uh, messed about in the phone, went to sleep, and 
hustling and turning. Yeah, what are you supposed to do? Like but it's just... It was being announced that next morning at seven o'clock, so I was up from six and um, dad was ringing me, he's like, any news or blah, blah, blah. And I was like, no, nothing. Of nothing. course he was. Yeah, yeah I haven't heard anything. I haven't heard anything. And then bang, it came out and he goes, you definitely knew. But that didn't And he's like, God, oh, I'd, I'd, I'd heard, but I didn't want to say anything because it wasn't confirmed. So, so he murdered you, did he? Yeah, he had a few choice words, but he was up and he was happy and sure. Mommy came up then, she, I was in mommy's house that night, Dad, daddy was, was was away and uh, yeah, it was, it was mad for, you don't actually realise it yourself, it doesn't sink in straight away, but when it, the impact of the community or club and all, it's proud moments for them. So this, for them, it's, it, it more hits you how it affects people around you more so than it affects yourself. So yeah, it was um, a cool experience. Yeah, it's kind of it's kind of an individual award as well, you know. Like as as you're saying earlier, like it's not your ultimate goal because it's a team sport, but it's an individual award. It can be hard to kind of recognise, you know, what you've done. I guess you know, yeah. in that sort of sense. And I remember that as well. My my mom, she flew over to see a game in in Arizona. I was playing in last year, and um, like I kind of just like playing away, just doing my thing. And then I kind of went over to her at the end. I could see her and my brother kind of coming down the stands. And, you know, she was like, she was like trying not to cry and all this sort of stuff, you know, and she's giving me a big hug. And I kind of realized then it was kind of what it meant mm -hmm. to her, but kind of, kind of translated through me, you know, kind of being, you know. That's what I'm saying, like you're, you're in, you're in a massive bubble, like. Yeah, yeah. In sports and you're trying not to get emotional about it yourself and you don't never do. But when you see like your mother, your father or your brothers or your sisters or uh, your friends coming down after a big win and, and they're, they're ecstatic someone maybe crying and stuff, it sort of hits you then, you're like, I'm having an impact here, like, and so on, on people, you see other people, other families hugging the, their own sons, and, or, and uh, you're certain, like, it's not about us as well, like, you think it's all about you, and you're all about the team, but it's about the communities that you represent, it's about everybody else you represent as well, and the younger kids coming on, and they're high-fiving you, and getting their jersey signed, you're like, yeah, well, we're preparing the next generation here, so, there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of, pluses to it that you don't realise during the season but when you actually see it after a big win and stuff you go yeah this is this is worth it yeah it's always like after fact a little bit of aftermath that kind of comes true but as, as you said you know you're kind of you're so focused on yourself sometimes because you just want to take care of your own performance you know or whatever you're doing and then yeah it kind of hits you like a ton of bricks so I guess talking about kind of impact um, obviously you've been, ma you've been massive for Monaghan you've been massive for the game in GAA and now you're kind of pushing on into a completely different sport, you know, one of the best leagues in the world, the NFL. You're going as a place kicker through the IPP program, um, true leader kicking has kind of opened it up. So where where do you kind of see yourself now as kind of like a symbol? I guess I know we're kind of early days. You still gotta to go to you still go to Florida for your training camp, you still gotta to get to the combine. But how has kind of the the that impact kind of been so far that you've gone from, as you said, like a wee little lad in in uh in Monaghan? kicking footballs, perfecting technique when you're six years old. And now we've got a chance to play in like the best league in the world, to be one of the best 32 players in the world. There's only 32 jobs. And that's going to be potentially you. Yeah. Um, as I said, I said there already, like it probably just not kicked into me fully yet. Like I'm doing the training. Um, I'm doing two or three months of training at this stage. And you're thinking you're just kicking American football until it actually... It's probably fully in there, like once it's, you know, out there and like once you're on that plane going to Florida, like, you know, you're, it's probably just going to go, right, let's get into showtime here. And uh, for that opportunity to be one of the 32 kicker, best kickers in, in the NFL, it's, it's a... Uh, well, in the world, the thing is, which like, you know, a lot of gap people might not realise, like you got backup goalkeepers, obviously you've got backup teammates. In an NFL team, they carry one kicker. And he's a starter, and there's no one else. So you're one of fifty on a fifty-three man squad. You know, about ten practice squad positions, and that's just going to be you. Yeah, right. Okay, there, there you go. So the, yeah, one of the top thirty-two in the world. Um, yeah, it's it, that's it's so surreal. I mean, when you when you say it, like you're sitting there, whoa. So uh, yeah, I mean, no pressure, no pressure, <laughs> no. And I won't put it. I won't be putting that on myself. And it's something I'm um, I'm well used to now at this stage. But um, yeah, it's. It's not unbelievable. Like that. Yeah, I think you say yourself, like, it's, you've kind of got, what I'm, what I'm hearing anyway, is you've got like, all the tools to kind of make this work. Like you're even saying earlier on in your career, you know, you miss one and, you know, you'd be kind of beating yourself up a little bit about it. You're kind of going back. And when you step back up to the next kick, you're thinking about the previous kick. But now, kind of, you know, you're uh, fully fledged athlete. You're like kind of like 
close to perfecting your art um, and you're kind of like, I don't even think about that. Like miss a kick, pff, done, boom, next mm-hmm. one. Hey, go three, four in a game, job done. Which I think is kind of the perfect mindset as any NFL kicker, but especially a new one kind of coming in, kind of water off a, duck, a duck's back. Um, and I know you've been training with a few of the other lads as well who are going to be joining you. Um, so Mark Jackson and Charlie Smith. So how has it been like kind of coming from similar backgrounds? I don't know if all of you are in a goalkeeper Facebook group together. Is that where Tyg finds you all? You know, he kind of just went searching. But how has that been kind of, uh, I guess, relating your process um, and you kind of being the more mature one, I guess, um, to the two lads? Yeah, um, like the way I say mature, not older. <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. Um, but um, t- yeah, and we're all bouncing off each other. We're learning different things. Like, you know, the every lad has his own near niche kicking style in a sense. So um, whatever works for them could, may not work for for the other person, but it may as well. So we are bouncing a lot off each other and we have our only WhatsApp group now, maybe not a, a specific goalkeeper group, but we had a wee WhatsApp group just to make, uh, you know, over the Christmas period, yeah. getting down and getting a session done or that. So, um, yeah, it's 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 nice being with them, like get, learning their backstories about you know how they've come up through through the GA system and and how this has came about. Like you know, um, I don't Charlie, do you find uh, it curious that you are all goalkeepers going in, or does that kind of make sense? Because you know, I guess the traditional way of being a goalkeeper is you're just boot the thing as high right. and as far as you can kick out. I mean, now it's got a lot more nuance. You gotta you, you gotta pass out. You know, it's almost coming like soccer. You're almost like a bit of a bit of an Allison or Man City or something. Yeah. You're adding, as you said, like a 15 or 16 man to the team and you got to pass around. Um, do you think it's kind of weird that you're all goalkeepers or it makes total sense? I think it makes total sense just in terms of how, you know, your whole technique is based around how you're going to kick this American football. So um, I do think it's uh, it's not not coincidental at all. Like um, I firmly expected uh, Mark to be up there from what I'd seen, yeah. Charlie as well. Um, and there's probably numerous other goal keep, GA goalkeepers that could be up here as well um, there's only certain amount of positions that, that could have been filled in this player pathway for us and um, thankfully you know, we've, we've made the, the, the five kick-in slots um, but it will be it'll be tough but I, I've, I've no doubt about it that me Mark and Charlie will, will give it our best shot and three hours ways to get into the NFL will be a massive for one of us to get in it'll be huge Um but I do hope that if one of us do, definitely does get in because the work that we've put in the last three or four months has been outrageous like in terms of what we've put in and um, it's, it'll only be deserved if, if some of us get in. Yeah, and there's one guy, obviously he's kind of taken over the news a lot in the NFL world this year, especially from an Irish perspective, very positive, was Daniel Whelan becoming the first Irish player in about 38 years playing the Green Bay Packers. And he's going out as a punter. All three lads are, are, are uh, kickers. Um, but Daniel's already there, possibly paved the path like he's from Wicklow and actually played Ga as well, but moved to California when he was 14. Um, so there's already kind of a pathway there. So I'm sure it's going to be exciting. Like I'm fully positive that one of you are going to make it. Like I just know it. I can feel it. I'm talking to you here. It's, you can feel it in the room. I know Ty's kind of training you. Um, so I'm kind of excited to see kind of what's actually going to happen, especially kind of when you get into the, mm. the ticketings, like kind of you and Mark and Charlie and kind of bouncing off each other. Um, I guess talking about specifically about football and kind of the adapting your training a little bit, two big aspects to, to if you're going to separate kicking, probably separate into kickoffs and probably separate into field goals. So have you been working on both? Like, which have you found more difficult? Like, I would kind of assume, I should never assume, but you being here you are, I'm assuming kickoffs are a breeze at the moment, but I don't know. Yeah, I've been, I've been kicking them quite well. Um, I've been kicking them seventy hours, maybe in on beyond the yep beyond the end zone, and um, and most NFL teams will probably look for that. They look for about seventy to land you back into the middle of the end zone, roughly, um, basically for a touchback. It's what yeah. most teams kind of ask yeah. for. So was that kind of weird to kind of prop it up on a tee? Because I know you can use a tee as well for kickoffs and gab. But was it kind of strange to hit it the first time? Or yeah, because I remember um, he was just saying, let's let's just go for distance here and let's try and get it in. As far as we can, and I remember, I mean, I had a, that is Ty right, just kind of being, like, yeah, yeah. yeah. Just, give this so, just sort of getting a, a view of us, and uh, I remember, I think it was over in England, and um, I'd hit a minus fifteen on my first one, and um, I just said, "Well," and I remember, it was a coach Hagen came up and was like, "You got a strong leg," and I was like, uh, "You know, eighty yard boost for anyone who's actually paying attention and can't do the math." Yeah, so 
to hit that one first off, I think it give like give a sense that this boy's got something here. Uh, it's nuts though what that does for your confidence sometimes, isn't it? That first kick. Yeah. So all of a sudden you're like, oh. Because we had a we had a good few practice ones before that and obviously you're warming into it and I did hit a really big one just before it started. Um, I'm not sure what the distance was because it wasn't counted, but it went far and I was like, right, let's just re- let's just do that again. Like, let's just start that again. So yeah, I went to minus please, 15. Please and then do that again. I think it was like a minus six and a minus eight after that. Um, Perfect. We used to do three kickouts, but three kickoffs. Um, but yeah, I was happy with how that went and I felt that's, hopefully that will catch their attention and stuff. And it did um, in terms of, we also had to do the accurate part of it as well, trying to get it out just outside the numbers, just just as far as we can down the pitch with high hang time. Yep. So the four four seconds plus on, on hang times just to get us down the pitch. And I uh, felt that was grand as well. I, I felt I'd done really well at that. Um, and that can be a lot more tricky, so that's good. It's a lot more tricky, but obviously you're going to have to deal with what weather conditions are holding and stuff like that. Um, but again, something you might not be used to in, in Monaghan, like particularly what Daniel is dealing with now is like, you know, couple of feet of snow mm. <laughs> yeah. and he does kick off as well some of the time um, and he's having you know obviously the ball's a lot colder as well mm. and, it's, and it's still a leather ball so it's kind of trickier to keep the ball up in cold air than yeah. hot air so yeah but um, yeah that obviously depends on, on where you are and what, what field you're in but um, for me um, it's just about nailing every every opportunity when it comes along and uh, that's what I feel I've been doing in the training with Tag and um, obviously when I was over in England so uh, the next the next obviously few few months will be uh, will be interesting but something I'm, I'm excited about doing the, uh, but in terms of kickoffs, yeah I'd probably find them a, a wee bit easier than, than the field goals but. yeah I think they kind of translate probably for a goalie would seem to be a bit better and then, so for field goals how have they been like kind of adapting um, obviously there's the two aspects of it we train usually you train off sticks mm-hmm. so you just pop it up there yeah take a couple of sticks you probably have to change your steps as well did you or did you have to change that much uh, it was just more the technique side of, of uh, the jab step and, and and that but no I've, I've got into a technique now where I'm happy with and striking the ball better Yeah, I uh, have a bit of self talk bit of breathing to do and then you do the nod and, and then bang yeah the contact I don't know if you noticed a big contact on the ball like I, I noticed when I'm kicking NFL balls because they're smaller and they're made of leather the sweet spot's really small mm. on them Especially compared to a round, yeah. a round ga ball. Yeah. Do you find like when you're kind of striking it, you're kind of like, oh yeah, like that's it. And then you, you just know to... before you raise your head, you know, you've kicked it well. Exactly. Um, they're, they're, they give you instant feedback. It's they're, yeah. they're kind of amazing that way and they're terrible that way. Yeah. You know, you also hit it. You know, you, but you don't even raise your head some of the times, you know, you've kicked it bad. But um, yeah, if, if the wee jab step, uh, just getting used to that. Um, I suppose one, two, bang. Um with, with Gaelic football or maybe an, an extra step or two here I'm getting used to that just half step um, and then one two bang over the bar That that's that's my uh, just getting used to that at that time after all the work I feel I've gotten, gotten to that position but there's always there's always more more learning to do um, it's amazing for something that seems so simple and so almost like diplomatic there's there's so much there's to so it there's so much to it yeah so I think the switch obviously from sticks to live reps has been it was a challenge at the start. Now I find it um, there's not much difference in it when you no, treat it. You have to go into the mindset and it sticks that there's, someone's going to come to block you here. So um, in terms of that, yeah, the live reps, I always find we finished a, a lot with the right live reps and I find that, that it just gives you extra confidence when you're striking just as well as you are on the sticks that you, 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 I will make the transition a lot easier. Yeah. And sometimes those little thoughts inside your head kind of disappear during the live reps because once you nod to your holder, You've no more control. No, like you don't get to decide when you go. The snapper does, you yeah. know, or anything else, and you can just bang it. Do you find that kind of helped? Like, kind of as a you're, you're obviously a natural athlete, like you've got years of experience behind it. Do you find that a bit, almost a bit easier going through live reps, or kind of a bit like oh geez, uh, at the start, something else you gotta get yeah, at the start, no. Um, I did find it a wee bit tough at the start, just getting used to the snap, bang, go. Uh, and obviously, it's very quick. You got one point three seconds. One point three seconds, like so. Which it, is you now, if anyone could just count real quick, if you've counted, you've probably been longer one point three. Yeah. If you're listening to this, yeah. you counted. That was yeah. probably longer one point three. So it is. It is very fast. Yeah, but we. I think we've encouraged and and Harry's encouraged a lot more of the live reps and sessions. So, um, yeah, I'm getting used to that there and getting that one point three, just nailing that there. It's uh, as I said, tough at the start, but more you do it, the more you do of anything. You're yeah. better at it and you're going to get more confident at it and that's how it's been. So yeah, it's been a, a good learning curve um, in terms from the start to, to where I am now. But again, a lot, a lot of still a lot of time. To and, and how does it feel then, I guess, kind of 
walking away from Monaghan for as even for the meantime and to kind of give this kind of all that thought, all this training, all that effort. Has that been kind of like tough to kind of decide to do or kind of Yeah, it's it's been tough, like, you know, something that you've been. Because obviously you're, you're you're established and you're there and you got a, like the kind of the, all the GA community there. Um, a lot of your friends and they're kind of going into this niche individualistic opportunity, which is massive, by the way, mm-hmm. but still. Has that been kind of difficult to transition to? Yeah, it's been a big part of your life. So something that you're not doing as much as you did the last 10 years. Um, yeah, it, ha- it it does a lot more free time, but um, the opportunity doesn't come around every every day of the week. So it's just something I have to put my full focus into. Yeah, and then even up till, uh, you know, a month ago um, in the quarterfinal of the Ultra Championships, you added a, a great point to hit over, right? Yeah, it was... And he's free kick near could that, end, yeah. Could that possibly be the last kick for Manning if you make it into the NFL? Well, I would have had two games after that. I would have had the final and a final. The, la- the last game winner I meant to, I guess. Uh, look, you really see you want to say hopefully. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, potentially. Um, I'd love it to be uh, because it means that you've been picked up. Um, so, uh, obviously our last game we lost in the final. But yeah. It's not the way you want to go out in your GA, but um, it is what it is at this stage. You know, we can't turn back time. So uh, to go into America now and, and, and start potentially a new career and, and, and try and make memories there, that's that's what I have to focus on now. Yeah, and I'm, I'm sure there's going to be no problem in terms of uh, kind of community there and kind of getting involved. Like they, they really take care of their own athletes around there. Um, it's obviously exciting because there's there's a much different you're going from an amateur game where you're not really getting paid to like a professional game where the minimum salary is 800 grand a year, you know, as a rookie. Mm. So um, obviously I'm sure that's kind of a big influencing factor as well. Um, so I'll, I'll put it to you this way. Let's just say everything's going great the next couple of months. Fast forward a couple of years, 2026, you're playing for the Philadelphia Eagles. You're in the Super Bowl, it's 6 p.m. You just won the coin toss. You get to kick off Philadelphia Eagles. You're the kicker. You line up, begging, sitting back, number six. He goes back, puts his hand up, right, 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 ready, left, ready. You feel nervous? I think at that stage I'll be excited more so than I'll be nervous, but Super Bowl 2026, like, yeah, you'll be nervous, but. Would, would, would six year old Rory Began have ever thought that? I don't think he would have, no, but. Um, I'm sure he'd be a proud wee boy if, if, if he uh, does see that there in 2026. Absolutely. Well, Roy, it was an absolute pleasure. Appreciate you coming on to Enter the Arena. Wish you all the best with uh, with Leader Kicking, obviously the International Pathway Programme. I can't wait to watch you in uh, Indianapolis. I will be there myself, so don't worry, I'll be cheering you on from the crowd. You and Charlie and Mark. Again, thank you for joining us on Enter the Arena here with Rory. Um, please, you can rate this and subscribe. It really helps. Share this with your friends. And can't wait to see Rory in the Super Bowl in 2026. I know it's going to happen. I guarantee you. Rory, cheers. Thanks a million. Thanks a million. Yeah.